What's happening, guys? Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we're going to go through our lesson 3A, part 2, or 3B, I guess I should call it. Um, I still want to hear from you guys. Send me something on the mind. Send me a, shoot me a text message. Uh, I've been trying to send out a verse each day this week, uh, kind of leading up to Easter. Uh, and the whole, every verse that I've sent so far is kind of part of the story of the week leading up to um, Jesus' death on the cross and then his resurrection. So uh, check those out. If you're reading those every day, just send me a message back on the mind that says, hey, read it today. All right, let's try to... Um, Let's try to do that each day. Um, so, uh, without any further ado, we'll get into our lesson. But first, I wanted to kind of review what we talked about a little bit last week. Um, so, again, this is Jesus the Deliverer is born. Um, last week, when we read those scriptures, we talked about the encounter, or read about the encounter that Mary had with Gabriel. And we saw that uh, Gabriel's greeting troubled Mary, and then right after that, he addressed those fears, and we saw that Jesus' birth would fulfill a promise that God had made to King David, that the Messiah would come from his lineage and his family line, and then we saw that Mary responded in faith, and I hope you were able to go back and read um, verses 34 through 50. Um, and then we talked about uh, and read part of what's called Mary's Song, what's known as Mary's Song, and it was basically just a celebration about God's grace and the fact that Jesus was the new hope, all right, and that, you know, they've been, God had been silent for a long time, and then Jesus coming onto the scene through Mary was a new hope for the, for the Israelites, and through him, through Jesus and the cross, we gain everything. All right, so that's kind of some of the things that we talked about last week. So now we're going to continue on and look at a little bit of the next part of the story. Okay, and the next part of the story picks up in Luke. Again, I apologize for the glare. Um, I think it's from the actual projector. I'm not real sure. But anyways, we have the lights off today. So uh, the next part is Luke. 2, 4 through 7. It says, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them okay um, and as we talk about this today we're gonna kind of see how you know God's calling us when he calls us it's not always comfortable or it's usually not comfortable um, and that was kind of the situation uh, for Jesus also okay and we'll talk more about how and why that is in just a minute um, so Jesus, you know, who is also God, um, he's the God of the universe. He's the one who spoke the heavens and the earth into existence. He's the one that holds it all together. Um, you know, he's the one that made everything, that all things were made through him. Um, he's the very source of life. Okay, that God became a human in order to redeem us of our sins. And when I say us, I mean the world. Anybody and everybody that chooses to believe in him uh, and accept him as their savior, he came and died for us. And you think, well, that, you know, okay, so what? Well, the, the big deal about that is, is Jesus became a human when he was already, he already had Unlimited power, unlimited knowledge, um, perfect comfort and pleasures in heaven. Um, he, I mean, he was in a good place. He was in a, the best place. And 
he gave up all of that, all those rights and privileges and everything he had going on. He gave all that up and sacrificed that to come to earth as a human and live here with us and then eventually die on the cross for our sins. He gave up all those things, all that comfort for us. Um, so not only did he take on our flesh, but he also took on our, our deserved condemnation or our deserved punishment. Okay, he did that whenever he came into this world. Um, and what he did, because he did that, because he came into the world to redeem the world, he did that because he was obedient to his father. And then he took on our flesh and our condemnation. All right. And so the question that they ask here is, uh, when have you given up a privilege for the sake of others? And how did that make you feel? All right. So I'm not going to get real deep on this. The one that I immediately thought of is my kids. It never fails. If I'm eating something that I really enjoy, Jaylee's got to have it. She's got to have a bite of it. She's got to have half of it. You know, she always wants whatever I have. Okay. And so a lot of times I, you know, I give it to her, but reluctantly sometimes, like I don't always want to give it to her or I may sit down and want to watch a video on my phone or whatever. Get on social media. Well, as soon as I get my phone out, Jaylee wants my phone. Okay, so that's a comfort or a pleasure that I give up. It's a privilege that I give up. Now, how does that make me feel? Sometimes it makes me feel frustrated. It's kind of like, oh, my goodness. Okay, and I don't always tell her yes, but the majority of the time I tell her yes. Okay, so, but when you think about that, that's a super small comfort you know, that I don't, that I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up half of my pie. You know, my mom's been on a pie making kick since we've been on quarantine and it's starting to show in my clothes. All right, Landon, chill out with fat jokes. So every time we eat the pie, Jada's got to have some of it. Well, I give it to her sometimes reluctantly, but I give it to her. So it makes me feel frustrated. Well, that's just a little tiny, tiny, simple comfort. God, Jesus gave up everything, ultimate power and knowledge and everything. And he did that in complete submission and obedience to his father um, because he wanted to bring honor and glory to him. All right. He emptied himself by becoming like us in order to rescue us is how they put it. Okay. He did that for us. Gave up all those comforts. Okay? So, uh, the next thing that I wanted to mention here is that he gave up all those comforts, and so then he came here to earth, and he lived with us. And he, you know, he spent time, 33 years here on this earth with us. Um, and so you might think, well, man, if, if I had to give up everything, I might be kind of bitter about it. I might not want to, you know, be that helpful, you know, be that friendly, whatever you want to call it. That might be our attitudes. Well, but we don't see that with Jesus. He left heaven, came here, and while he was here, there was just action after action after action of continual sacrifice, okay? Um, so when he was on earth, we see that his life was filled with surrender, Okay, so he did that. He surrendered to the Father and he surrendered to his will. Eventually died on the cross. All right, he sacrificed. He sacrificed a lot of world, even, even he sacrificed a lot coming here from heaven, but even on earth, he sacrificed a lot of, you know, he wasn't a rich guy. He didn't have a lot of material things. You know, he didn't even have a home. He didn't even have a place, you know, once he started his ministry. He didn't even, you know, he didn't have a house that he lived in. He just traveled around, you know, and people had, you know, he was able to stay with other people and that kind of thing. You know, he gave up a lot of worldly possessions even while he was here. All right. And we see a lot of selflessness in Jesus, you know, in his life. And we see an attitude of service. 
Okay, he was constantly and continually um, serving his disciples, the people he came in contact with, you know, performing miracles. Um, but what's crazy about that is, is he was totally deserving of total dedication to him. But even though he deserved all that, all that dedication, he came here with the purpose to serve us and not to be served. All right? Um, you know, and even up in the last hours of his life, when Jesus is praying, you know, right before his death, you know, he, he prays and declares to God, not my will be done, but yours. Even though he knew he was fixing to die, and he didn't necessarily, he didn't want to do that, but he sacrificed and he was willing and he, he did that. You know, and it just shows the type of servant mindset that he had. Okay. Um, so just as, this, the, to wrap this up here, it says, uh, just as Jesus began his journey on earth with humility and surrender, Jesus once again at, at chose submission and self-sacrifice. He follows God's will to the cross, leading to salvation for all who would trust in him. All right, and so he did that for us. If you have never surrendered your life, to Jesus, if you have never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, I would love for you to talk to me about that. If you have questions about that, message me, call me. Again, my number is 548-1098. Give me a call and we will walk through that, okay? I'll talk to you about scriptures. We will walk through that. Um, but if you have given your life to Jesus, um, the question that, they, that I want to leave you with is, what keeps you from surrendering all of your life to God. What comforts and pleasures do you not want to give up? Okay. All right. And I can answer that for you. Some of you don't want to give up sleep. Okay. Because you don't want to get up on Sunday mornings. That's one thing. You know, that's something that could be holding you back from completely. And that's just talking about church. I don't, I'm not, you know, that's not exactly what I mean, but that is one thing that we, you know, that's our time. That's basically what that is. When we want to choose to sleep and not learn, go and learn more about Jesus and more about the Bible, more about Scripture, you know, that's our time. A lot of times, or a lot, that doesn't make sense, but a lot of the time, we don't want to give our time, okay? Um, and I run into that, you know. There's times where I should probably be studying the Word and, you know, studying my lessons, but instead I go fishing or, or sometimes I think, well, I'm too busy. I got to mow. I got to, you know, we got ball practice. We got this going on at school. We got FBLA this weekend, whatever it may be. A lot of times time is that thing that keeps us from fully surrendering to God. So during this stay at home order and when we're not supposed to be out and about so much, we have time. So I pray and want to encourage you to use this time wisely to learn more about God, learn more about Jesus, learn more about the Bible, become closer to him in your relationship, okay? Uh, and whatever that, whatever that thing is, whatever those things are that are keeping you from totally surrendering, right, make a list of those and pray about them. Right? Ask God to help you give those over to him so that you can serve him fully. All right, I'm going to pray for us, and I hope you guys have had a great week. Um, Easter Sunday is this Sunday. Uh, also, going to be putting out a video. I want you to watch and enjoy that and learn and, and grow closer to God. All right, I'm going to close. Dear God, thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for just allowing us to... Uh, I do thank you for this time, even though there's so much chaos, confusion, and sickness, Lord, I, and I pray for those that, is, that are being affected by it, but I do thank you for this extra time that we have to be able to just slow down and, and look to you and learn more about you and just kind of, you know, realize who you are and that, you know, we get caught up in the rat race of life sometimes. We shouldn't do that, Lord. We should, uh, we should always focus on you and make time for you first and foremost. Uh, I pray for each and every student 
uh, that's watching this, Lord, each and every student that is in our group. I pray that you'll just uh, be with them through this time. I pray that you will um, encourage them to uh, just to be a light to those around them, to be helpful to those around them when they can. I pray that they just look for opportunities to do that. I pray that you'll just continue to help me in, uh, in studying your word to be able to present it in a clear way to these students, Lord. Uh, I thank you for all the things you do for us. Uh, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.